my mom. Well, she's one of the kindest, most giving, loving people you'll ever meet. Creative, genius, love family, love always having us all together. Anything to make that happen. Wonderful cook. Um, she made a big breakfast for us always. And then um, we'd always sit down to dinner every single night. She learned to cook in France. She was an au pair for a year after high school. And she literally didn't know how to boil water and she learned how to cook there. We never knew what we were gonna come home to after school. You know, it would be either something, um, you know, she'd make a wonderful cocoa vent, or my favorite was beef stroganoff. She raised sheep, we ate a lot of lamb. And that was always a, a family favorite. I can't eat lamb anywhere else. But sometimes she'd have all these things boiling in pots and we'd think it was food, but then you get a little closer and you realize, I hope that's not food. And she'd be boiling wool and dyeing wool. My mom taught me that probably when I was nine. And she's taught several of my friends how to knit. We used to have a knitting group at my, at my house. And then you know, after she got sick, I just stopped knitting because it just reminded me too much of her. But then just in the, I guess it was about this time last year, I saw something in the bulletin about the knitlets and I thought, you know, I think I might like to do that. That'll make me go and knit. And I feel like I'm honoring mom by knitting, you know, keeping the, the tradition going. When she got sick, we started noticing little things, but it didn't, we kind of thought, well, no, I mean, she's still probably grieving dad, even though he had died three years earlier. You know, she's still grieving and she's somewhat depressed. Maybe she can't hear. Maybe it's her hearing. It was just little forgetful things. And then it became more obvious in January where um, she started getting lost. She would call me and say, Maria, I I'm trying to get to the hair cutter and I just, I I'm just a little turn around. Can you help me? Think, you know, that's, that's strange. She's gone to the same place for I don't know how many years. And then, um, so that was kind of an indicator that something's not quite right, but you know, I think you try to suppress some of the things. And then she started just coming to my house and we'd go get a haircut together. And that was a sort of a happy medium. And then very quickly after that, there became a sort of all of a sudden there was sort of a lack of empathy. And she just, she didn't ask about the boys anymore, Kevin, and all our conversations got very shallow. And that's when I say kind of the unraveling started. A real unraveling of this wonderful, very intelligent woman who spoke five languages, was the fiber artist, the great cook, you know, had raised five children in this house on a farm, and we started losing her. It was so, so hard changing that relationship, going from being a daughter to the role reversal of being more of her caregiver. Um, shortly thereafter, Encore started and the support group started and Valerie Boyd was a huge support to me where I could go and realize that what I was experiencing was very normal. And God has put people in my life uh, during this process that I didn't anticipate to be there. And then, then all of a sudden, you know, a couple of months later, you think, oh, okay, I know why they were there. Thank you, God. That church community of faith has, has been very, very helpful to me. And I have to, you know, I have to admit, there was a lot of anger in this process. Like, why, God, why are you doing this to this woman who's, so happy in her home and has so much to give and she's so young. She was only, I guess, 74 when it all started. A journey is a great description because there's certainly been a lot of highs and lows. You are constantly grieving. Every time I come down this beautiful driveway and walk in this door, you grieve again. It's because it's you've lost a little bit more of her, a little bit more and a little bit more every single day. It, it, it does take a lot of faith and a lot of strength that sometimes I didn't feel like I had, um, especially when I'd be angry. I'm driving away from here, crying, driving home. Just, gosh, I wanted her for longer. I still
of honor, of honor. For my kids, my brother's very young kids, they didn't get a, they didn't get to be with Mumi, as my boys have called her. Um, it's good to cry too. I've learned that. Sometimes I keep it in a drawer, but you gotta let it out. Uh, and now we're now we're towards the end. I think I think we're ready. It's it's time for her to to be released out of this body and mind that doesn't work any longer.